Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do factoring or factoring a polynomial when you're using in particular the distributive property. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, factoring is basically the opposite of multiplying. In other words, what you're doing is that you're taking the product, which is the result of multiplication, and you're trying to figure out what numbers can be used to make that product. So let me go ahead and give you an example here before I get into my details of today. So, you know, I got 8 times 7 equals 56. Now, 56 is the product. In other words, it is the result of multiplying 8 times 7. 8 and 7 are both factors of 56. In other words, you take these two numbers to get the product or the answer of 56. And so when you are doing factoring, you're trying to take something like this and you're trying to convert it into two or more numbers or two or more expressions, if you will. And so this is what we're gonna be doing in this video. However, we're not gonna be doing this for numbers. Instead, we're gonna be doing this for polynomials. So why don't we go ahead and get started on that? So. Here we go, here's my, the polynomial I wanna do. I'm doing eight x to the third power minus 12 x to squared y plus 20 x y squared. Now, I want to find a factor, but not just any factor, I wanna find the greatest common factor. This is like the largest, if you were the largest number or the largest thing that all of these different expressions have in common. That's what we're trying to do. Now, so here's what we need to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull apart each of these individual, um, I guess you can call them monomials, if you will, and sometimes uh, polynomials, and we're going to uh, see how it works out. So we're gonna start with the eight. So if I break out the eight, here's what I have. So eight x to the third power. If I break that down, I get two times two times two, because that gives me eight. But then also I have x times x times x. That gives me x to the third power. Now, if I break down this minus 12, I'm gonna get the following. So I got 12x squared y. That's gonna be again, two dot two, but this time three. And then it's gonna be x, x, and then y. That's how that works out, all right? And then now if I do the 20, if I do the 20 x, y squared, this is what I get. I get two times two times five. Now notice how I'm always trying to use the smallest numbers possible. That helps with simplicity. Um, in terms of working my way across this. And then I have my X, and then I have a Y and a Y. I put my little dots, my little multiplication sign here. Now, to determine the G greatest common factor, this is what you do. You look for the, as you grow across each column here, basically, you look for the numbers that are in every single column lined up. So for example, in this first column, if you will, I have all these twos right here, so I bring this two down. Here, I have all twos again, I bring this down. And then lastly, I have all x's here, I bring these x, this x down. That's what I do. The other ones, I do not bring them down because they're not in every single column. So for example, I got x, x, y, doesn't work. x, y, y, doesn't work. It has to be the same number or the same variable the same constant or the same variable every single time. Now, when I do this, I simplify my expression here. That's not too complicated. So my GCF is going to be two times two is four, four times X is four X. That is the greatest common factor among these, um, these three terms here that I have, these three uh, binomials or whatever you wanna call those. Now, I'm gonna show you the next step. So here's what we do next. I'm going to take each of my terms, so I had eight x to the three, I had minus 12 x squared, Ooh. x squared 
Did I miss something? X squared. Oh, I got to put the Y. Sorry. Y. And then also, I have to put the, uh, let's see here, 20 x y square like so let me make sure i didn't make a mistake here no i put the y there okay good so i'm ready to go now i'm going to take my greatest common factor which was this guy right here this 4x and i'm going to watch what i do here so put an equal sign for each one i'm going to put 4m because this is my greatest common factor i'm going to put it in each one now oh my goodness not 4m 4x, excuse me, 4x. That's what I do here. And now I need to figure out what do I have to multiply 4x by to get x to the third, 8x to the third power or 8x cubed. And so this is where I'm breaking out the factors. This is what I'm doing. So to get this, I have to multiply by 2x to the second power. If I do that, I will get 8x, 8x to the third power. Now, for the second one, technically this is a negative 4x. Please be patient with me on that one. To get a negative 12x, or actually I can make it a negative 3, excuse me. To get a negative 12x squared to the y, I have to multiply by negative 3xy. If I do that, if I multiply these two together, 4x times negative 3xy, I will get negative 12x, 12x squared y that's how it works and then for the last one if i multiply by five y square i will get 20 x y square so you can see we're making a lot of progress here now the next thing we have to do is we have to take all this information and put it in a, a, a one single expression and so we get the following down here at the bottom so let's see if you can see this so I take this guy right here and I bring it down like so. So I got 4x times 2x squared like that. And then I got, um, I'll just put a minus sign here, minus 4x dot 3xy, and then I have a plus 4x dot 5y squared. So all I do is I brought down each one of these. The first one right here at the top is the first little pair right here. Second one is the second pair like so, and this last one is found right here. Now we can simplify this, and the easiest way to do this is to use parentheses put our greatest common factor outside the parentheses and leave the rest of it alone. And so this is what it looks like, finally, when you do this. So let me go ahead and uh, show you what this will look like. So I bring out my 4x right here. I put him outside. And then I take my other factors. So I have my 2x squared. I have my minus 3xy. And then I have also my plus five in square, like that. And so now everything is complete. And so what happens is that by putting the four X outside, I don't have to write the four X three times. I just write it once because you multiply everything inside the parentheses by what is outside the parentheses like so. And if I were to just calculate this real quick, let me just go ahead and rewrite this real quick Four X minus our 2x squared minus 3xy plus 5, uh, 5y squared, I believe, 5y squared. Oh, I should have put a y here, excuse me. That should be a y. Okay, we're done, we're almost done here. Okay, so I'll put a 5y squared. Now, if I multiply this out, well, you know what this is, 4x times 2x squared, that's gonna be 8x to the third power. And then if I repeat this process right here, 4x times negative 3x, I'm going to get minus 12x squared y. And then, of course, last one, if I multiply this right here, I get plus 20xy squared, which is exactly what we started with. Oh, excuse me. 
exactly what we started with. 8x squared, 12xy, 20xy squared. 3xy, 3xy squared. Oh, I forgot to square right here. Excuse me. Um, oh, it's right here. 3xy. So you can see everything is right here like we planned it out to be. And so this is how you do a factoring. Now, often, once you get comfortable with this, it's very automatic. You don't really sit here and go through all these steps. These steps like this are very, very useful when you're first trying to get comfortable with factoring. But once you become familiar with it, it becomes really, really quick. Um, with experience, you can clearly see that 4x is the largest, the greatest common factor amongst these three numbers here, and it just flies like that. But that just comes with practice. So in this video, what we did was, is we learned how to do, uh, how to do factoring when using the distributive property. And so we started by defining, you know, what is a factor? A factor is the numbers you use or the expression you use to create a product. So it's multiplication and reverse, if you will. Somewhat similar to when we talked about synthetic uh, division and uh, 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 long division with polynomials. And so in order to do this, you set up your just traditional multiplication of your various terms, break them down piece by piece, find out what numbers they have in common, what variables they have in common, multiply across like so, and you have your greatest common factor. This greatest common factor, which you'll see right here each time, is used as one of the factors to determine the other factor. So we used our 4x to figure, okay, what do I have to multiply 4x by to get x, 8x to the cube, 8x cubed? And we found 2x squared, minus 3xy, 5y squared, etc. And then you take this information and you put your greatest common factor on the outside and the other, the other factors that you found through doing your basic uh, division here, your, your basic uh, solving, you know, multiplication or whatever, you put those inside. And so when you put those inside, you're able to have your factor term. And that's how it works. So I hope this video was useful for you and that you were able to understand what we were trying to do here. My name is Dare Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.